Good morning, and welcome to this recorded worship telecast from First Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls. Thanks for worshiping with us on this Baptism of Our Lord. If you'd like to follow along in the bulletin, it's available at flcsf.org. Pastor Lars Olson will lead today's worship. Pastor Jeff Backer will preach this morning's sermon. This morning's broadcast on KELO-FM was given in loving memory of Samantha Kramer, made possible by earnings from a gift by family and friends to the First Lutheran Church Foundation. Congregation, please stand. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As we approach the mystery of God, let us come in confession, trusting the love of Christ crucified and risen. Most merciful God, we, can we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Beloved of God, you have not received the spirit of the world, but the Holy Spirit that is from God poured out to you in the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. Receive again the promise given to you in baptism. You are God's child. And in the holy name of Jesus Christ, the crucified and risen one, your sins are forgiven. Amen.
in baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity, but by water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. The congregation may be seated. Bitsy and Joshua, parents called by the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace of God, do you desire to have your daughter Rory baptized into Christ? If so, please answer, we do. We do. As you bring her to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with these very vital informative responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to hear the word of God and the Holy Spirit, to teach her the Lord's, the Lord's prayer and the creed and the Ten Commandments, to place into her hands the Holy Scriptures, to nurture her in faith and prayer so that she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ crucified and risen through word and deed. That is, in short, to give her the Bible and the catechism, to tell her of God's law and promise so that she will grow up in the Christian faith. Kevin and Alyssa, as sponsors, do you promise to nurture Rory in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, please answer, we do. We do. And to you all gathered here this morning, the people of God, do you promise to support Rory and pray for her in her new life in Christ? If so, please answer, we do. We do. Would you please stand? And together with the whole church, let us profess our faith in Christ, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. Is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his host in the Red Sea. Yet you led your people Israel through the water onto dry ground, prefiguring this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted that all waters be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would now enfold Rory according to your boundless mercy and bless her with true faith by the Holy Spirit that through your word given in this water, all sin in her would be drowned and die. Grant that Rory be kept safe in the holy ark of your church and secure in your promise, serving your name with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers, she would be brought to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to bring her right over 
Let me turn her head around so she can get over the water here. Rory, Faye, Plucker, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Kind of keep her warm with this. It gets a little chilly. Well, there it is. God doing his work, giving a promise, doing all that he can to give us life. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through the water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Rory with the gift of your spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and reverence for you, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Rory Faye Plucker. Child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. When we have a baptism, we always send our families home with too many things to carry. The, uh, all of these to remind you of the promise. Uh, we give a cross that's made in our wood shop. You can hold that onto that. Um, from the, the men in our workshop to remind us of that we are joined to Christ's death and resurrection. We have a blanket. It's very nice and warm. Uh, it's made by our seventh graders who are in confirmation learning what it means to have a promise from God, to be baptized. And of course, we have a candle that we light from the baptismal candle, the Christ candle here. I'll let you hold on to that. Keep it away from the beard. For Jesus said, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So let us welcome Rory into the body of Christ and into her extended family of faith here in this congregation. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Do you please stand as we sing our baptismal hymn? have seen a great light, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
The first reading today is from Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 through 9. It is found on page 686 in the Old Testament. Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nation, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon and from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they, bring, they spring forth, I tell you them. Word of God, word of life. The second reading for today is from Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 11, and it's found on page 148 in the New Testament. What are we to say? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? 
Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive in God, in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life. Gospel according to St. Matthew in the third chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the the heavens were opened to him and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. A voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace and peace to you this day from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, in whom we are baptized into a life of faith. Amen. Today is the first Sunday after Epiphany. Technically, the festival of Epiphany falls on January 6th, which was this last Monday. This festival observance officially brings close the Christmas tide or the 12 days of Christmas and has historically been the day in which we give homage to the wise men's visitation of the Christ child at Bethlehem. In other parts of the world, the day of Epiphany is called Three Kings Day. And in some traditions, the festival carries as much significance as Christmas itself. In Eastern Europe, children lay out their shoes the night before Epiphany and receive gifts in them. And the tradition is to also set out hay for the king's camels or horses. Regardless of traditions, most all Christian churches celebrate 
the baptism of our Lord on Epiphany or the Sunday after it, as we will do today. In the Orthodox churches, much significance is placed on water in their celebration of Epiphany. In fact, the Eastern Orthodox Church, it is tradition for the priest to throw a cross into icy waters and brave believers compete to dive in and recover it. Maybe we should institute this tradition. <laughs> we can meet down at the banks of the Big Sioux River and cut a hole in the ice and I can watch you all dive in to show your sign of faith. Well, I went ice fishing on Friday and I will tell you that if we institute this tradition, some of you would become permanently closer to our Lord. <laughs> Besides, this would be a good work, and that is not why we are here. The Western church, including the Christian churches of the United States, have focused on epiphany as the season of light. If we look back to the original Greek word of epiphany, it means to manifest or to reveal. And it is in this mindset that we look at today's gospel text in God's work to make Christ known in the world. God reveals Christ in somewhat of an unexpected way. We hear the story of John the Baptist preaching repentance down at the River Jordan and giving baptism in the river. And once we get past this character of John, we get a very interesting understanding of what God is up to. Because one thing we have to remember was in that time the Jewish people had been looking for the Messiah. The one foretold by the prophets. The one that was to come to reestablish the Jewish nation as the nation above all nations. They had expected a king like no other since the time of King David. One that would come and establish his reign. Point in fact, the Jewish people are still looking for this Messiah today. Now our text from Isaiah for today is the proclamation of this one to be anticipated. As God spoke through the prophet that his chosen one, the one whom God upholds, the one whom God's soul delights, is coming. This, of course, is the message that we have just celebrated in Advent. But again, we are here with John at the banks of the Jordan, and Christ walks right up to him. And what is John's reaction? Well, first, he doesn't quite understand what's going on. In fact, he argues with Jesus as if he has any leg to stand on. I need to be baptized by you. But of course, Jesus, in the way he does, says, no, this isn't about you. This is about me. And our text says that John consented as if he had a choice. And so Jesus walks into the Jordan and is baptized by John. Now the church, maybe not so much our church, but the greater church has dealt with this text very interestingly. Because the church has taught us that Jesus' baptism is all about us. Now I'm not saying that it doesn't have something to do with you. But what is taught is that baptism is seemingly about you choosing about your making yourself right with God. That your God withinism has finally aligned and consented with God's will. That you are now cooperating with God. But that's really not what is happening here at all. It is about what God has sent his son to do for you, and it is about how God wants to reveal himself, to make himself known, to speak into your life. It is about God sending his son not to do what the people want him to do, but what God needs him to do. Now many may ask after hearing this text, why was Jesus baptized? Isn't baptism just for sinners? This question raised because the church has failed to teach what is going on. And the answer to this question shows a perversion of the church to make the event about us choosing about our own self-righteousness as if God cannot do what God does without our consent. I read an article in Living Lutheran magazine where a young lady named Kadaya Islam, a student at the University of Wisconsin, makes her own assertion about being Lutheran. 
One of those statements she makes in the article is in response to the violence happening in the world and her needing to separate God from it. She goes on to say that she must find God within herself to make things change, to make the world better. The problem is this kind of thinking has been influenced by the belief that God does not accomplish what he will by his own will and purpose. That nothing happens outside of God's will and purpose. But the reality is deep down, most, if not all of us, believes somewhat the same thing. It is the basis of our sin and our separation from God. Many have bought into the mantra, be the change you want to see in the world. And so we make resolutions, right? To be better people, maybe to be healthier, to be more giving, to be better spouses or friends, to change the world for the better, whatever that might look like. Now don't get me wrong, there are things about our lives that we can and should change. But there is parts of your life which you have no control over, which you have no say in. One of those places is when death draws near. And this can scare us. In the same way, you cannot control your own salvation. And this also can scare us. Because to think that we have control in these matters is nothing but an illusion. And it is certainly not anything of certainty. And so God reveals his son in Jesus' baptism, making him known to you and to the world. And in this revealing, God sets the course for what he has sent Jesus Christ to do. Because the understanding of what Christ came to do begins in his baptism. And that eventually leads to the cross. In baptism, Jesus goes down into the muddy water of the Jordan River and he emerges dirty, not just soaked in the muddy river water, but dirty in a different way. He emerges with an identity. He emerges having taken on your identity, a sinner. It is in his baptism that Christ takes on your very real and actual sin, the one whom he's come to redeem. And he takes it to the cross, having taken on your very real sin, and he dies for the punishment of sin. He doesn't pay a price like God can be bought off. He is not the scapegoat. He dies for your sins. And you are put to death in that same event. This is where we can fully understand St. Paul's assertion in 2 Corinthians 5 when he says, for our sake he that knew no sin became sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Hearers of God's word, it has been said that the only certainties in life are death and taxes. But I have been called here today to give you the only true certainty that you may cling to. Jesus Christ meets you here today to speak his word of promise so that faith, your faith, would cling to him. That as you go through life with all of your wants and your needs and your burdens and your struggles, trying to mitigate the things that you fear, that instead of trying to seek God within yourself, that you would know that the Holy Spirit has come for you that he grants you Jesus Christ freely. When Jesus came out of the water, now a sinner just as you are, God preaches and gives him a sermon, a promise. This is my son, my beloved, in whom I am well pleased. When God preaches, he preaches his son. In your own baptism, you too were given a promise, the same promise that is certain and true. And God gives the same declaration on you. This is my son or daughter, my child. So that you would know in certainty that Christ is in fact for you and you were marked with the cross of Christ forever. 
And in doing so, you have been claimed as his own. He has taken from you what he was not, your sins, and he has given to you which you were not his righteousness, which he actually tells you from this text. This must be done to fulfill all righteousness. Christ has put himself in your place under the demand of the punishment for sin, which is death, and he gives you his place, which is new life, eternal life. And to know this promise is a powerful knowledge as we live in this world Because the devil will try to speak in your ear and try to create doubt when he sees the perfect time. Sickness and burden may arise and you may start to doubt. But faith clings to this promise and you get to invoke Christ by saying, I am baptized into Christ Jesus. And that makes all the difference. And Christ has already answered, those that believe and are baptized will be saved. So as we gather today to hear this promise given, may you now cling to your own baptismal promises, just as we have seen Rory claim today. An event that will last for an eternity for her and for all baptized into Jesus. That you would know for certain that your life is in Christ Jesus and that he raises you from death to new life. God does not lie. He cannot lie. And God's promise is most certainly true. Revealed to you by faith, for faith. Thanks be to God. Amen.
called together through the waters and word. We boldly pray for the church, the world, and all who belong long to hear God's voice. Lord God, remember your promise to all the baptized that having been united to Christ's death and resurrection through water and the word, you would return us daily to your word, strengthening us by your Holy Spirit to live the new life given in your grace. May our witness and ministry to this grace in Jesus' name faithfully proclaim your good news. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we give thanks and rejoice in the, your abund, abounding, abundant grace that provides new life throughout the world. We especially rejoice in the birth of Andrew Robert, born to Elizabeth Atchison and Ted Marguerite this week, as well as to your promise in baptism and new life being given to Jonah Deutsch and Rory Plucker. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we also pray for our nation and for our elected officials, and we ask that you would work amongst the leaders of all the world to wisely use all the resources which you have supplied to care for the needs of people, to protect life, and to promote peace. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, giver of knowledge, we ask you to bless our students, teachers, and all the school's support staffs with gifts of patience and peace throughout the upcoming term as they teach and study and work and grow and learn. This week, we pray for the elementary schools of Cleveland, Discovery, Laura B. Anderson, Laura Wilder, Lowell, Christ the King, St. Lambert, and St. Mary. As well as for the middle schools and high schools of Edison, Whittier, O'Gorman Junior High, Academy, Lincoln, Sioux Falls Christian, O'Gorman Senior High, and Brandon. And also for those studying and teaching in colleges and universities of the University of Sioux Falls, South Dakota State University, Texas Christian University, Creighton, the University of Minnesota Morris, the University of Minnesota, and Northwestern. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, grant healing and comfort to those who experience mental or bodily distress. Our prayers are for those who are hospitalized and have asked for our prayers, including Dorothy Osted, Tad Danish, Judy Heggie, Jane Nelson, and Peggy Uthie. Also, we ask for your blessing for those who mourn the death of a loved one, including Joyce Nelson on the death of her husband, Harvey Nelson as well as for the family and friends and all those mourning the death of Robert Larson. In loss and in grief, grant us faith in the resurrection unto eternal life in Christ given to us through baptism. Lord, in your mercy. We place our prayers before you, God, united in your spirit through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And Take a moment just to share the peace of Christ with those near you. Receive the offering.
Let us pray. Merciful God, you open wide your hand and satisfy the need of every living thing. By your grace, use these gifts to spread your name and salvation throughout our community and world. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for joining us for this telecast on KSFY from First Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Media ministry at First Lutheran relies on the generosity of sponsors. You can donate or learn about sponsoring a broadcast by calling 605-336-3734. Until next time, may the love of God and the peace of Jesus Christ be with you. This has been Sunday Worship from First Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls.